Hey there, thank you for joining us for the 2024 Placemaking Grant and Creative Pool Question and Answer Workshop. My name is Kate Cabaza. I'm an urban designer and planning associate at the City of Charlotte's Urban Design Center and want to thank you for your time and welcome to this virtual space. If you have questions after attending this workshop, we will be hosting an in-person session on Thursday, uh, February 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Charlotte Urban Design Center. Our office is at 1507 Camden Road. I'll be giving the same presentation, hanging out, answering questions. Uh, you can register for that in-person event by scanning the QR code on your screen. You can also register on our Instagram, social media, CLT Urban Design, um, and sign up for a quarterly newsletter while you're in there too. And as I go through this presentation, I wanna point you in the direction of our placemaking grant guide. Um, if you scan this code, it'll take you to the PDF document. The information that I cover in this presentation uh, will be in this document. I've made a key on every slide that corresponds to where the information is located in the guide, so you can follow along at home. It's in that blue box at the bottom right-hand corner of every slide. Um, So in this presentation, I'm going to go over a quick introduction to the Urban Design Center, the placemaking grant program, um, and mainly spend time covering what you need in the application. Um, and we'll do the same for the creative pool as well. So the City of Charlotte's Urban Design Center was launched in 2016. We're the newest division within the city's planning, design, and development department. Um, you can see we're a team of seven multidisciplinary staff members. That includes landscape architects, archite architects, policy professionals. We got planners and public space activators, and we're all ready to jump in and think through your projects. Our mission at the Urban Design Center is to advance the quality of Charlotte's built environment and bring awareness to the importance of urban design. So we work in three categories of activating our studio with monthly programming for all audiences. Uh, we also serve as internal consultants for other city departments. And of course, we work in placemaking. And when we talk about placemaking, we're talking about the collaborative process to better connect community members to the spaces and the people around them. And I think this quote from Fred Kent is really the embodiment of that sentiment that everyone has the right to live in a great place. But more importantly, everyone has the right to contribute to making the place where they live already great. Um, placemaking is different than art making in the sense that this is an all hands on deck process that inspires people to reinvent and really reimagine those public spaces um, in a way that contributes to their health, happiness, and well being. And that leads us to the Placemaking Grant. It's a one of a kind resource. It serves as a bridge to connect community members who want to enhance their public spaces in their neighborhoods to the funding and design assistance necessary to make those ideas happen. This all kicked off in 2019 as a resource for community members to activate and to beautify underutilized and leftover spaces. Um, this is our fifth year of administering the grants and we have a pool of over $150,000 to distribute during the application process. Um, the grant is aimed at smaller scale, quick win projects that cost less than 25,000. And these projects are aiming to enhance the community vibrancy, uh, safety, and identity through projects like streetscape improvements, creating community gathering places, and art and beautification efforts. In this picture, we see a mural complete, completed by Duarte Design at the Lion Surfaces Project in 2023. And we're very proud of this effort, and it serves as a reminder um, to everybody who sees it on the corridor for what a great placemaking project is and can do for the community. So, of course, the placemaking grant covers materials like paint, uh, furniture, artist fees, contracted labor costs, um, and installation. But what's unique is it comes with the Urban Design Center's uh, knowledge base and a grant manager who is there to offer design assistance. They're there to help you choose materials, uh, coordinate with other city departments, 
help get through things through permitting and serve as a connection to other city departments like Housing and Neighborhood Services and CDOT. We're here to help you start with a small placemaking project, to learn the process, and then maybe do bigger and better improvements in the future. So what the grant does not cover are salaries. Um, also alcoholic beverages, no beer can be expensed, anything that happens before the agreement signing, um, personal use, uh, political campaigns, and anything that goes towards discrimination of race, color, creed, origin, sex, gender, age, disability, et cetera. So who can apply for the placemaking grant? Just about everybody, as long as you and your project are in Charlotte. Um, like Pineville does not get placemaking grants, uh, only the city of Charlotte city limits. And this grant is open to neighborhood and homeowners associations, community organizations, businesses, and merchant organizations, and even individuals. Um, all uh, applicants need a project team, and a majority of those people need to live in Charlotte. If you're selected, you need to be able also to make the city of Charlotte vendor requirements, like providing an address for payment and for tax information. So now that we know that you're eligible, um, and what sort of projects actually qualify for placemaking funding? These are some of the projects and project ideas that we funded in the past. We've done a ton of wall murals and street murals, parklets, you know, bike parking and programming. We also offer a technical assistance grant, uh, which is a workshop with placemaking staff to identify opportunities in a technical playbook action plan. Um, these are the, the technical assistance group are for groups that have a lot of ideas, maybe around a certain parcel or neighborhood, but they need help refining them. Um, whatever the idea is, and even if you don't see it represented on the spread, we're open to exploring, but it must impact the public realm. So what do we mean when we say the public realm? So to talk about the public realm, here we have a view of Camden Road in South End, our offices right here to the left if you come out to the placemaking in-person answer session. And this slide illustrates what the public realm is, and it's everything that anyone can enter for free. It includes the streets, the sidewalks, the parking spaces, right of ways, you know, those alleys, greenways, odd shaped leftover spaces. So that when you're thinking through your placemaking grant idea, we're going to award projects that have a maximum impact on the public realm where people can see it and have access to it and use it every day for free. You can see that all of these buildings face the street and the sidewalk. They're highly visible. Uh, nothing is fenced off or hidden. So if you wanted to do, uh, you know, like a mural on the side of a building facing a rail yard in a parking lot only used by employees, that project does not have a high impact on the public realm and it's going to score lower in the placemaking grant selection process. And these are some of our favorite projects that have been funded throughout the five years of the grants. We have Duarte Designs, uh, the Line Services mural for uh, blind and low vision uh, employees at this uh, facility. We have Brooklyn Collective and a Technical Assistance Grant, uh, Lavanya Parks and her Five Points mural at Rita's. Uh, Curtis King and Jan Johnson with Uptown Farmers Market did a wonderful a wayfinding mural in the bike lane on North Davidson Street in front of the Government Center. Uh, we have Echo Hills, Hashim Halim with Derida Designs and his bus stop build, uh, Georgie Nakima's piece on uh, the Sugary Place murals, Abel Jackson uh, mural on uh, the Beatty's Four Corridor and in Inlow with her art walks uh, at Five Points. We love these projects um, and we're excited to do more this year. So we've learned a lot in the past uh, five years of administering this grant, but some basic no-no rules for the right-of-way. So that space between the curbs is no words, no advertisements, uh, no free little libraries, uh, things that we'll have to clean up to do that invite personal expression. Um, 
and make sure those items can't blow away or impede traffic and nothing to close the travel lanes. Um, in terms of CDOT regulations, signal cabinet wraps are only uh, approved in uh, locations that are in the placemaking grant hub. Um, crosswalks and sidewalk murals need to be below certain traffic counts on those streets that are applied for. Um, and we can figure that out together um, by contacting CDOT. Um, and you need the adjacent property owners through that as well. So, all right, now that we have placemaking project ideas uh, and we know who and what types of projects qualify, um, we're going to go through a few bits of the written pieces of the application. Um, and I want to go over those additional requirements that are unique to this grant. So I wanted to take a minute and talk through the written asks of the application. Uh, starting with number one, we want you to come into the project with support and form a project team. Uh, these are three to six people who represent different community perspectives and skills that can help implement your project. Also, the big thing to note here is that your project team cannot overlap and provide letters of support. Those need to be different people. Uh, number two, placemaking can have big social impacts. Uh, for example, making fresh food more accessible with a community garden. We want you to explain those opportunities or concerns in this question. Uh, number three, as placemaking projects enhance public spaces, you're required to host at least one public engagement opportunity for the broader community to offer input, you know, help with the install, etc. This can be as small as a survey or as big as a community paint day. Let us know what you need, what you're thinking, and we can be a help later on forming that uh, strategy. Uh, for number four, we're asking you to sketch out a timeline for when you're thinking of installing uh, rain dates. Just show us that you're preparing to complete your project by the end of 2024. And for number five, when preparing a general budget, we're just asking you to justify the funding amounts you're asking for. We're not asking you to account for pennies here, uh, but outline reasonable costs. Like, for example, an hour of programming in a city space or a two foot mural install is not gonna cost $25,000. Um, so we're asking you to be reasonable and justify with a general budget. Number six, uh, when we're talking about maintenance plan, um, this is only if necessary. And some projects like murals or signet cabinet wraps, these are meant to be temporary and can be removed after a period of time. Projects like pop-up plazas, uh, things that are being used for gathering spaces will require a maintenance and programming strategy. So outline how you and your project team are looking to keep your project vibrant, uh, not only for this year, but for next year, if it has that level of permanency. Um, number seven, I'm just looking for photos of your site in an aerial from Google, you know, showing me and the selection committee where your project is located and to verify that it is in fact uh, touching the public realm and making that the biggest impact that it can. In terms of number eight, um, the site plan or design, artistic ability does not count we're not looking for you to produce a you know a construction drawing or a rendering for your pre preliminary design uh, this is just to include uh, what you have um, include images of similar projects ideas of what you're thinking um, in the form of a design or a sketch and put those all in a pdf for me um, and then for letters of support we're going to get into that on the next slide so first and foremost, every project application, no matter what, needs a letter of support from the neighborhood association where the project is geographically located or a letter from the equivalent organization. It's not a letter from where you personally live, but where your project is located. Um, these letters take time to collect. You know, sometimes boards only meet monthly and I've received a lot of questions asking what a neighborhood letter of support should describe. And I'm reading these letters to verify that the Neighborhood Association A is aware of the project um, and B has your, their support. You are not asking them for financial contributions or for their programming, just their acknowledgement and support of the project. 
Uh, you can connect with your organization by consulting the neighborhood organization contact list, which is run by the Housing and Neighborhood Services Department. And it's also linked on page seven of the guide. So depending on where your project is located, you might need a second letter of support. If you're planning a project on private property, you're gonna need a letter from the property owner, like a, the business or the property manager too. And even if your project is in the public realm, there's different levels of ownership to the public realm. Uh, the streets and the sidewalk are for the most part and City of Charlotte right-of-way, and you do not need any prior coordination with the city to apply. So that's everything in green in this image. Um, also, NCDOT uh, does not need to be involved, and you do not need a second letter of support from either the City of Charlotte or NCDOT. Um, you do need that letter of support for private property, if it's anything in purple here on the sides of building, including county facilities and schools and greenways, anything to that nature. Since the city of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County are separate, you do need that letter of support from a Mecklenburg County uh, facility. So now that we know how and what and where, um, you might ask how these applications are scored. Uh, the criteria right here on page 13 of the grant guide. Um, this evaluation is completed by an interdepartmental panel of city staff, and these are the exact criteria that go into scoring every project. Um, like I, we talked about, we go over the project budget, make sure things are realistic, um, and the project budget represents those expenditures. Uh, remember, no salaries. Uh, you can go back to that slide. And that the project is viable, invisible, that it impacts the public realm, um, that your written responses, remember, to those uh, community concerns or opportunities are outlined, um, that you're thinking about the community, uh, how to involve the public in your letterhood, your letter neighborhood of support. Um, your application includes a clear plan for community outreach and how to engage uh, your neighbors in this. And that it's innovative and cool and distinctive and has that social impact. If it's also located in a corridor of opportunity, you get a bonus point. So after your proposal is accepted and you're awarded the grant, uh, we still need to work your project through the official city channels for approval. Um, since you're not required to reach out to city departments before application, we'll work with you to find the right avenue for success. You can start planning right now through our placemaking hub. And the Placemaking Hub is an online toolbox for public realm enhancements. It's a way that we have listed the city's interdepartmental partners, and it's accessible for all community members. Uh, basically, it's our placemaking customer service uh, one-stop shop. It's soon to be revamped, but it represents the multiple city departments like planning, CDOT, housing and neighborhood services, general services, CATS, um, all of those departments put their documents together in processes to make enhancements and create art in the right of way. So it's our way to say yes. So you can start planning and scrolling around those applications to see if your project proposals are feasible in terms of what we have now. And just uh, to get your brain start thinking for the future, uh, after you're awarded, this is the program that we will start in 2024. Uh, we'll start with kickoff meetings between your project teams and me, and we will get uh, things rolling into the project development and public engagement session uh, where we're going to start planning your meetings um, and really deep diving into your projects to make sure that we're working them through the appropriate uh, city channels, getting your permitting, getting your uh, applications in for paint the pavement or whatever it may be. We will be working together to make sure those are possible. Uh, we'll move into construction and installation when you guys are ready. It's kind of work at your own speed here and we'll accommodate it. 
Um, and then next year we will have a spring open house. Um, we're going to have a spring open house for 2024 in April. So keep your eye out for that. Um, and you might be invited to it too. So switching gears here into the second half of our placemaking program is our creative pool. Um, applications are also due March 15th, but let's look at the creative pool program and how it ties into the placemaking grant and city placemaking work. So we launched the creative pool program as a pre-approval process to match local professional creatives on a rolling basis with placemaking project opportunities throughout Charlotte. A creative selected from the pool may be commissioned to produce original works that range in scale and scope to collaborate with the city to provide design or management services for art elements. So when a creative service is needed, the project manager, whether that's the UDC or a community organization, uh, placemaking grant awardees also use the pool or a city staff person they can directly select an artist um, or we can share that opportunity uh, through the artist pool with interested artists. And what kind of creatives can join the pool? Anybody who participates in mixed media or written or spoken word. Uh, we're looking for video and photography, fabrication, community engagement and implementation of art and performance. Um, anybody with a creative service who is a professional creative in Charlotte can apply to the pool. So applying to the creative pool is a less intensive process than the placemaking grant, but just as impactful. If you are a returning 2023 creative pool member, you do not need to complete the application in its entirety, but you do need to resubmit the form. If you haven't been getting emails from me with opportunities, you're not in the pool and you got to reapply. If you do not complete the form in its entirety, your application will not be considered. So if you're questioning if you're um, already part of the pool, you can reach out to me or just resubmit all of your information. And what we're looking for is for you to describe your interest in public art, um, attach your resume portfolio or your CV um, that has your professional history and skills as a professional artist in a PDF document. And then please provide the name and contact information of at least three professional references for projects completed in the past five years. And just looking at numbers, so far this year, we've offered close to $46,000 worth of commissioned projects to the creative pool. And that includes opportunities from city-led projects and other placemaking grant projects. Um, over the past five years, uh, we've had over 71 creatives included in the creative pool. And in terms of placemaking grants, we've awarded over 50 grants, um, over half a million dollars, and 28 of those have included works by local artists, giving us a grand total of 74 opportunities for local artists. We reminded everybody that the applications for both the creative Pool and placemaking grant program are due March 15th. Don't miss out on this opportunity. We're looking forward to uh, reviewing all of the applications and to get inspired by a new cohort of placemaking grant grantees and creative pool members. So please stay in touch. Um, I'll be posting more question and answer content on our social media. Uh, you can check out our placemaking program websites and follow us on social media. Also sign up for updates for our blog and newsletter as well. Um, you know where we're located uh, and you have my email just in case you have more questions moving forward. And before we open it up to questions, uh, these are the common uh, questions that I have been hearing and been res responding to. So I've been getting a lot of questions about programming and does the placemaking grant cover festival programming or one day uh, festival type events? And the answer is yes, but it's only in our three city of Charlotte public spaces. And that's Five Points Plaza in what historic West End, uh, the Ritz at Washington Heights and the Green at Prosperity Village. Um, I've also been asked uh, if you're applying for traffic calming, do you need to budget in those CDOT devices like speed humps or those little rumble strips? The answer is no. 
Uh, just worry about the placemaking elements within your grant application. We will go back and reach out to CDOT um, if you're applying for those devices. It's kind of like the city paying itself twice. Um, and you just need to focus on the placemaking aspects of your grant. Um, I've also been asked, can we apply for multiple projects in the same cycle? The answer is yes. Just complete separate applications with separate letters of support for each project. Also, um, I've been getting, if you have an idea for a mural and if uh, you don't have an artist, that's what we got the creative pool for. Um, you can apply without an artist selected and then we can work together to put out a ask for artists in our creative pool. You don't necessarily have to use the creative pool artist for your project, but it's always there as a resource and available to you. Um, I've also been being asked if the neighborhood association in which my pro project is located is not responding, how do I get that letter of support? Um, so usually these projects lay between uh, neighborhood association boundaries. And if you go back to the grant manual, you can consult the neighborhood organization contact list for options in your area. Um, there are multiple organizations and you can uh, pick to see which one is on your boundary and how many projects are awarded each year. So we have a total pool of $150,000 available for 2024. The selection committee may award partial funding to projects to accommodate all of the applications. 